Hello and welcome. As you saw in the intro, we're doing something a bit different today, putting these skeletons I found in my basement to use. I've been wanting to make more dioramas and this fellow got me inspired to make a giant ancient astronaut. Because since I'm planning for most of the skeletons to be buried in the diorama, I start cutting it down since I won't need everything and no sense in more work than necessary. As usual, super glue and accelerator are my main tools to get this together. I'm working on an offcut of plywood. This is a very dense piece for this project, but at least I know it won't warp. I quickly regret gluing down the head too early and have to snap it back off to install our astronaut's ruined helmet ring thing. The head tries to run away from me as I reattach it, but at least it's finally starting to look like something. I move over to a little bit of work with styrene to fabricate some additional elements. The idea is that this is the body of an astronaut that's been out in the elements for thousands of years. While his clothes have withered away, the metal pieces of his suit are still there. I'm pretty happy with the overall shape of this gauntlet now, so I put on a coat of weld on to start applying the smaller details and get to assembly. Then, after taking the time to create a gauntlet complete with readouts and buttons, such teeny, teeny buttons, I completely forget to film installing it. Sorry. I have a collection of these plaster rocks. They're cast in the woodland scenic molds that I'm sure you've seen around YouTube. Every time I mix up plaster, I pour off a few molds so I have them around for times like this. Do you have anything similar that you keep in stock? Any crafting supplies you find yourself hoarding? Leave a comment below, I'd love to hear more. Brush on a layer of Elmer's glue and a generous portion of this blue sand. This is followed by a healthy dollop of watered down glue spritzed over it to make sure everything is locked on once it dries. Such a teeny man. I'm making this a 1 100 scale diorama, so our teeny man is an average adult male, meaning that the skeleton would be about as tall as a small office building. Yes, I'm using totally scientific scaling for this. Keeping your palette limited to a single red, blue, and yellow can really help to unify your final look. I tried to stick to this palette for most of the initial paint passes throughout the project. While I get into the paint, let me tell you a little bit about the story behind this build. I've been inspired lately to dive into YouTube by channels like Gamey Builds, Boily Hami Time, Bill Making Stuff, and how they've been able to world build and tell stories with their crafting. I want all the projects I'm doing in this channel to connect to each other, and most of what you'll see here will all be building a world that I want to tell stories in and around. I'm hoping that you find that interesting. So, as this begins to start to look like something, let me tell you the story of the impossible giant. They found it on a Tuesday. At least it felt like a Tuesday. The scout party had been in the field for a few weeks and days had a way of melting together after a while. It was a kid that saw it first. A giant skeleton, impossibly large, sitting half buried in the wetland grass, aiming to guard the fields like an ancient sentinel. The party tried not to pay much attention, but felt like it was watching them as long as they lingered there. It was an old thing. Too old. When they got back to town, the story spread from the bar to the docks, and the way stories do in small towns like Last Rest. And then it was out in the world, on wings of rumor and half-remembered tellings. It took close to a year for the story to find its way to Earth, but Roderick Vance first heard it. As a xenoarchaeologist, most of his work started with rumors. News from the outer colonies was never reliable, and the sorts of things he looked for in his work were way being forgotten in official reports he may do with rumors. He didn't believe it the first time he heard. He was suspicious the fifth time he heard. But after weeks of hearing about the impossible 30-foot skeleton half buried in the mud seemingly older than human civilization, yet possessed of technology foreign and advanced, it was too important to ignore. With a small stipend from his university, Vance began his journey. 
It took three months to reach LL 1120, pitching tramp freighters and rock hoppers from station to station until he finally stuffed himself into an ill kept seat on a converted CH 108, headed for the town of last rest. Vance doubted he'd ever been so far from civilization in his life. Out here on the fringes, humanity survived and hoped to one day thrive on alien worlds. It wasn't a life that attracted the shining beacons of humanity. It took Vance three days of asking to find someone who would admit they'd heard of the giant, and a day more to find someone willing to guide him to it. But the price was cheap, a bottle of rock gut vodka and a few hundred credits. The band looked like he hadn't been sober in weeks, but Vance had come too far to turn back now. He slept rough in the fields under the stars. This world was mostly wet grassland. It seemed impossible to ever be fully dry. The man who called himself Rusty spoke little, and that suited Vance fine. The ground was too rough and uneven for wheeled vehicles, and hovercraft were at a premium in town. So they walked for three days. Then, at dusk on the third day, Vance finally saw it. The ancient astronaut the impossible giant. As Vance took his first readings, he knew the long journey was worth it. The creature, this alien, was impossibly old. It not only predated human civilization, it had died before humans had left the trees and started using tools. As he set about his work, Rusty watches him, taking swigs from his bottle occasionally. He seems to be considering for a moment before telling Vance there are more alien remnants on this world. Another day's journey would bring them to a ruin as old as this giant and just as strange. He could show him if he had the cash. Vance readily agrees. It seems that this world has many secrets for him to learn. Thank you for watching, everyone. If you made it this far, please consider giving the video a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel, and there are more videos on the way. With that, here it is.